Hey there, it's me again, the Grey Man. I'm gonna talk to you today about my fanzine. I used to do a fanzine called Kentucky Fried Afterbirth. Don't ask me to give you the dates and that, because I don't remember when these things were done. I'm useless at remembering stuff. I've got a uh, tape playing in the background, which is, uh, well, I'm gonna talk about Kentucky Fried Afterbirth fanzine and my compilation that I used to do called Cold, Grey and Dead. It's got a cut picture there, that's me from a Halloween party one year like dressed up as a zombie and he made a really good picture for uh... <laughs> yeah for cold crack and dead and uh, basically it was underground stuff so this first tape, I think I did this, what happened I, we brought out, our, my band Suffering brought out our first demo called uh, A Tangled Web of Despair and uh, it had space at the end of it so I like the B side and the uh, little bit at the end of the A side and I was like, I hate space on the end of tapes. I always used to fill up my demo tapes back in the day so I could, you know, so when I was on my Walkman I wouldn't have to keep rewinding and fast forwarding, I could just play all the way through. So I, what I did, I bunged a band called uh, Dark Heresy's track on the end of uh, side A I think and I think I bunged something else on the end of side B, it might have been the rest of their demo, I can't remember now or whether I've made a few tracks from other bands, I can't remember what I did on it now but that gave me the idea for doing compilation tapes. So this is the first compilation tape I did just called Cold Grey and Dead um, it's got Beyond Fear, Cause and Effect, Condemned, Dark Heresy, December Moon, Desecration, Esoteric, Evoke, Head Wound, Hexecution, Lightning, Mind Field, Morbid Symphony, Putrefy, Salem Justice, Serenade, Suffering, my band, Terminus, and Vomitorium. We're all on this first uh, one of my dem of a compilation tapes. I feel I was selling them for about two quid each or something like that. And um, the band as a whole, we said, why don't we do a fanzine? My, my, the guitarist at the time, Mike, he had the idea of doing a fanzine, like he sort of mentioned, and I, I was already thinking about it myself. So we ended up, and like it turned out being me doing the fanzine, as, as most things happen. People have the ideas and then they don't actually bother to, to give you any assistance. But this, uh, the actual, um, so I'm lying about that, my brother actually did all the assistance. My big brother who was living with me, lived in the same house at the time, we'd get drink lots of cider and, you know, this, this first one, Take Fight Afterbirth number one, it's a mammoth size, like I was basically just sending out, uh, interviews to bands by mail. It was before email. I didn't have any email. I didn't have a computer even. It was all done on typewriter. Uh, he's got some shots of, uh, I think there's some um, Cradle of Filth on the back there. My drummer took some pictures of them at a uh, gig they did when they were still when they were still a small band. I think it was the Dublin Castle. Although they, they, sh they exploded onto the scene really. But anyway, <clears throat> so it says here compiled by Suffering and Friends, which is my band. It basically it's me and my brother did most of it. I think uh, a couple of people might have done like the odd bit here and there. But I'll just read you, like, I don't know if you know any of these bands from back in the day. Most of them run the ground. Acrimony, Angel Kill, Apathy, Beyond Fear, Blasphemer, BAS, which is Blistering Anal Skin. There's a guy who went on to be uh, Warning. You know the band Warning? Really uh, influential doom band. Uh, Candle Serenade, Canopic Jar, Cause and Effect, Chapel of Rest, Chorus of Ruin, Cruciferous, Dark Heresy, Dearly Beheaded, December Moon, Devil's Church, which is the name of the venue, uh, the club night, Doom Flight, Ectopia, Edge of Sanity, Esoteric, Evoke, God Forsaken, Hexecution, Holosard, Leukemia, Manix, Mausoleum, Mindfield, Morbid Symphony, Morn, Ogre, Oscuro, Rain, Salem Justice, Serenade, Smear, Solstice, Terminus, Frenody, Unsilence, Visceral Evisceration, Vomitorium, Warlord, Waylander, and Winter of Torment. So, and at the time I had no idea how I was going to go about getting it uh, printed up or anything like that. I had no idea on that kind of thing. And in the end it was so big, I thought I only managed to get about 50 copies uh, printed up. So I managed to just like give one each to the bands, I think, and uh, and I had a really, really few to sell to people. And by the time we actually got it compiled, it was so out of date, it was hardly worth the effort, to be honest. And uh, with it being before uh, computers, um, it was just typed, really. Typed and sort of like, uh, yeah, it didn't even get logos for half the bands. Got a little editorial there, I don't think I put a date on it. But yeah, thanks list and so forth. Got my address there. Various thank yous to people. Yeah, interesting. I do think about putting it online somehow at some point, but yeah, loads of stuff in there. 
Uh, pretty basic interviews though, because what it was, I'd, I'd given like a list of 10 questions or something to a band. What I did actually, the Devil's Church venue in Camden, uh, they'd, whenever there was a band about to play, I'd make up a list of questions for them, give them to them, and then give them a stamp dressed envelope, I think, and get them to send them back to me. So there's a few bands that played there that I managed to get interviews from. Um, Oh yeah, one thing we did, uh, it's dated actually, it gives you an idea. We did a side interview and it's dated the 13th of April 1995. Um, we basically picked up a load of uh, white ciders. That was the, the era when there was loads of cheap, uh, strong cider on the market. And we did a review of it. We got the, the, the brand, we got the price, how much you got for that price, the percentage. They're all in the 8.4, 8.2. That's just back before they changed the rules and like 7.5 seems to be the highest you can get now. Um, yeah, the different companies. And the last one just says, we were too pissed to review this. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, cool, cool stuff. We had, we had a little section in this early one called uh, True For Bollocks, where we just like basically made up silliness. There's even someone did a short story for us as well. Uh, the Needler by Roger D. Whitten. I can't even remember this, to be honest. <laughs> Tales from the Afterbirth. I don't remember this either. <laughs> and was it in this one we started doing a story called uh, Archie and the Gnome, or is that in a later issue? I don't know. What's this about? Yeah. I should really. I'd be probably better if I was showing this to you actually, but sorry about that. Grey Matters, the philosophical rambling of a crap singer. Is there going to be a fresh revival? This is me writing in 1995, before we got the Thrash Revival. I love Thrash Metal and I got steadily pissed off the more the media tried to kill it off, calling it dated and unoriginal. Bands like Exodus, Overkill and Flotsam and Jetsam, great Thrash bands, had, hot, had scorn heaped upon them by reviewers, too busy sucking Metallica and Megadeth's cocks to see the wealth of talent on the scene. And so to try to fit in, these great bands progressed into wimpy hollow echoes of their once proud and great selves. But lately this trend seems to be changing. Bands I thought had even whipped out to the point of boredom or died a dishonorable death are suddenly re-emerging from the woodwork with excellent music. Take for existence Testament, who thanks to Alex Skolnick, lost their way somewhat. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And it was a little bit premature for the Thrash Revival, but the Thrash Revival did eventually come. <laughs> After I'd finished doing fanzines, actually. Anyway, so that was number one. Uh, eventually, I tied in the compilations with the uh, with the fanzines. So, if you bought a fanzine, you got a free compilation with it, kind of thing. But that didn't come till later. I think I might have done about maybe two or three compilations before I actually thought to uh, to include them with the uh, with the fanzine. Right, let's put that away. I've only got I've got two copies of this uh, first issue. Right. Let's show you, let's uh, take number two, so Cold Granddad number two, this is the master copy. Uh, it's got Apathy, Avulsion, Blistering Angle Skin, Confusion Corporation, Crawl Space, Cruciferous, Dark Entity, Doomflight, Epitaph, Epitome, and Exhumed on side one. Uh, Hell, Manix, Memorial, Morstice, Necropsy, Oscuro, Sanguinary, Dusty Defiled, Unearthly, and Waylander on side two. So there you go. Cold Grey and Dead number two. Now let's see if I can find you. This might be a long video. Hopefully it's not too boring. But this is my good condition cold uh, Kentucky Fried Afterbirth number one. This is the my pristine copy. It's all white pages and everything. I should get that, I should get that graded. <laughs> get graded and slammed. Right, so this is. Fanzine number two, much better cover. I don't know who did the art for us. I know my brother did the logo, the Kentucky Fried Afterbirth logo. We've got no idea who did that picture on the back for us. I don't know where it came from, whether we stole it from somewhere or what, to be honest. We might have, I uh, really cannot remember. But it looks good. <laughs> Fanzine number two, and you see at the bottom there, it's got Brain Dead, which is the name of the club that we'd started running by then on a Monday night. And the uh, catchphrase for it, price negotiable, all proceeds donated to our local publican. So in other words, you buy a fanzine off me and I spend it on beer, was basically the uh, the idea behind that. Oh, someone called Steve. Steve did the art for that. At least on that, that, that demon skull, anyway, demon face. Um, so this one, 
It's got some flyers here on the inside page. Not stapled this one. Uh, Club Brain Dead All Day, That's Defiled, Dark Heresy, VOD, Epitome, The Tragedians, Condemned, Embodiment, and Ashley Scream, Cenobite, and Destroyer. I think it says there, yeah. Some more flyers on the back from the old Brain Dead Club days. Uh, yeah, th this was, we, we moved on from a typewriter, we got a word processor. Again, it's not very good. Uh, I wasn't too good at doing the, uh, the formatting. I didn't always have a, a um, you know, I didn't have a layout thing for, for to putting layouts on, so it's not very good. <laughs> it's quite boring, plain text, you know? And I think we were still doing interviews in pretty much the same way. Oh, here's Archie and the Gnome. That's when we started doing the Archie and the Gnome story. My brother just wrote a story called Archie and the Gnome, and we kind of carried it on a bit. <laughs> right. Epitome. Band called Hell. Hellbound. Morstis. Necropsy. A few reviews, of course, in the back. Paganus Doctrina, they were a band from um, Costa Rica that I was trading with. I was trading with the guy at the time. There's another story here that somebody else did. I don't even know who did the stories for us. I forget, forget all these things. It's all disappeared in the, in the passage of time. Here's a band from, I think they were from Sweden, yeah, called Sanguinary. Uh, they were pretty cool. Serenade from Scotland. Thus Defiled. British Black Metal. Some reviews in the back, not too many. Addresses for the bands. Yeah. Book reviews, that kind of thing. I hope it was in the comic review, actually. Right, let me still using the uh, the word processor, I think. KFA number three, that's the picture of me on the back from the Cold Grey and Dead uh, Compilation, and this was a this actually the front cover on this one was taken from a flyer by a band called uh, Cold Blooded. It's uh, the police failed to grasp the basics of synchronized headbanging. <laughs> it's what it says. Yeah. Again, price negotiable. All proceeds donated to a local publican. It's got uh, it's got a suffering logo and a brain dead club logo on the bottom there as well. Uh, Blast furnace didn't even have a proper logo for this one. Again, this is still done on the old. Um, word processor denial of God but by this time I had someone who was able to print them for me actually so I think I actually Jason who used to do Brainer Club with me and he was one of the singers Mr. Gore from Gore Rotted he was working in printing so a couple of my fans he printed for me for nothing so that was good then later on I had to get somebody else to do it and it obviously cost me money then uh, Disemburied where are they from South America somewhere not too sure where Did I put, oh Panama Panamanian bag called Disemburied Right, Dread from Sweden. Uh, kind of, oh, this, this is um, Evoken. I forgot I did an interview with Evoken. Okay, that's cool. Nick Orlando from Evoken. Flesh Feast. I uh, featured on one of my uh, them old tapes uh, things that I did recently. Uh, Occult. Oh, wow, I forgot I did an interview with Occult. Dutch Metal as Occult. I think the guys from Occult went on to be um, Legion of... Doom or something now, what are they called now? I can't remember. Oh, they're a really good thrashing band. I can't remember what they're called now though. But I'm pretty sure it was the guy from a cult went on to become that. Legion of Death, Legion, I said something Legion, I saw. Um Ragnarok, a band called Ragnarok, a pagan metal band. More stories. Warning, got an interview with Warning. Withering Surface. Loads of reviews of various things. This is back in the week. Later on, I, brought, I decided to do a, change the reviews. I brought in some, what I call my cup of tea rating. Like, and I rated stuff depending on how much of my cup of personal cup of tea they were. So, yeah, various reviews here. Addresses and all that. Yeah, quite a lot of reviews. Another part of the story that somebody did for me, I've no idea who they were. <laughs> I'm not in contact with them or anything like that now. Yeah. 
something about my band here, something about the Brain Dead Club. Anyway, right, issue four, still doing the uh, like KFA, I've been using the KFC uh, logo and turned it into KFA Kentucky Fried Afterbirth. Uh, we're still using that, I can't remember what he was called, I think we gave him a name. And on the front he's an eyeball in his mouth and he's saying it's finger licking good. <laughs> right, still using the uh, word processor. I think I'm, I was getting better with the layouts though, I was like getting able to put pictures in, that kind of thing. Now actually tell a lie, I think this might be the first, when I first got a PC. Looking at that, I think this might be the first PC one actually. I think, yeah, I remember now, it was the first PC one. Yeah, I could tell by some of the bordering and stuff. Uh, so this has got uh, Elysium, Neuropath. It's weird, Elysium, they are an Australian death metal band. And I actually, the guys now, one of the guys with his brother, does a podcast called Metal Academy, where they go through all the years, talking about the history and what metal came out that year and that kind of thing. I'll see if I remember, I'll put a link down below. It's a really interesting show. They play loads of snippets of old stuff. So yeah, well worth checking out. Right, so Elysium, Neuropath. No, that wasn't Elysium, it was Neuropath, the next band. Yeah, Elysium is a, is a doom metal band. I, I used to trade with a guy called Stuart Prickett, and he's got a band now who are really good. What are their band called that he's in now? Oh, it's, got, it's a really sort of heavy doom, like really epic -y kind of doom death. I can't remember what his band's called now though, but it's really good stuff. I'll have to, if I can remember, I'll put a link down below to what his band is. It was Neuropath, who was a death metal band, and the guy is now doing um, um, a podcast. I think. <laughs> Let me just check the address here. Yeah, Australia, yeah. I was getting mistaken. At least it was Australian band as well. I forgot about that. Yeah. So, yeah, this has got, right, so Elysium, Neuropath, Morbid Symphony, UK band, Natron, an Italian death metal band, I think it might still be going, Vehemence, Torture from Memory, Gamora, they were a really good, black, uh, really good death metal band from the UK back in the day, my band actually played them, we actually put them on my Brandy Club once, uh, Nightmare Visions, they were a cool death metal band, Ebony were Lake, they were like a, they were on them, um, Cacophonous Records, actually. I thought it was going to be really big. I thought it was going to be bigger than Blinking uh, Cradle of Filth, but it did not come about. They disappeared pretty much. But they were pretty cool. Gore Rotted, Asphyxiator, and Ashen Mortality. So those are all the bands that were on this one. I won't bother flicking through it too much. It's got the second part of the Archie and the Name. Actually, that's a reprint, I think, of Archie and the Name. We reprinted it because we liked it. Um, Yeah, it's talking about the stories that were in the last couple of issues and I, I managed to lose the address or something of the person that, that gave me the stories so I wasn't able to continue the stories because I lost their address. Something daft like that. Right, then Kentucky Fried Afterbirth number five. It was an all ABBA issue. Kentucky Fried ABBA birth. I just, just randomly, I think I found an old ABBA annual, <laughs> so I decided to use some pages from that. Just made Kentucky Fried ABBA birth, Why, you know, as you do. Kentucky Fried ABBA birth, now we've added ABBA. <laughs> the best of British and a few other bits thrown in for a laugh. We've interviews, reviews, stories, history, quantum mechanics and other bollocks. Price negotiable, don't be tight. All proceeds donated to our local publican. So this is issue number five. Uh, it's got um, an advert on the first page for my band's demo at the time. I don't think we went with that cover in the end. I'm pretty, no, I'm pretty sure we didn't. I don't know why we didn't go with it. It's quite, quite sick though. It's a, it's a bag of dead babies, basically. Not nice, not nice. Right. Uh, I had a habit of messing up the date in these as well. On the date on this one, it says Feb uh, January 19 1998 is the date it says on the inside cover. But I know a couple of times I've messed up the date. I think this one it might be 99 because it was just turned into January. I believe you forgot to change the year over. But anyway, this has got interviews of CLLD who became uh, cold blooded later on. Orange Goblin, Acrimony, Evoke, Adoria, Avulsed, Spanish Death Metal, Paradox, uh, Confusion Corporation, Desert creation, execution and serenade. Uh, yeah, CD reviews, demo reviews, literary reviews, other bollocks. Kentucky facts, dancing with Schrodinger's cat, which was a story we did. Who killed Schrodinger's cat? I think it was uh, to do with just quantum mechanics basically. 
Archie and the Gnome, second part, something called A Rise to War, Mayhem Offer, Jones Story, A Farewell to Brains, Caption Competition and Tales from the Grey Side at various points uh, along the book. It's a lot better well formatted now, using uh, Publisher. Uh, yeah, Tales from the Grey Side basically was, um, I'd just do little stories. Just like, I'd, ex I'd make up silly things, like, oh, something would happen, and I'd extrapolate on it and turn it into a, you know, I'd overblow it, make it silly kind of thing. So, yeah, lots of stuff like that, basically. They were scattered around. They were quite popular. Uh, Acrimony, if you remember that, was they were back in issue one. They were the first band. Uh, hmm. Yeah, not too bad. Adoria, they're still going, I believe. Avulsed, yeah, they're still going. Silly little caption pictures. I think that, um, if I can find that, oh, it's an advert in the back, full of hate and uh, gorotted. <laughs> I think he was gonna give me 20 quid for putting the advert in the back, and in the end he, he picked up my fanzines from the printer for me, and he said, yeah, that, that, that'll pay for it, and I went, oh, whatever. <laughs> right. This gives you an idea of the weird things I was doing in Towers from the Grey Side. My final dabble for this issue into the world of sexual experimentation. That's, yeah, I'll just give you a line there. <laughs> right, and this is, I brought out the cup of tea rating. So I've, I've rated everything by how many cups of tea um, I rated it. Like basically how much of my cup of tea, how much do I enjoy this kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, it was rated out of 10. And then the, the review section was called Tea and Sympathy. So either I'd give, you know, say how many cups of tea that I rated them, and uh, or I'd sympathise with how crap I thought they were, <laughs> that kind of thing. Oh, right, here's the caption competition corner. Here was a picture of um, the guy from Desecration, Ollie from Desecration, and you've got to come up with a caption. And I can't remember what a winner won, but they won something anyway. Yeah, and there was a silly like joke advert that I did as well for uh, Mayhem. It was done in the style of one of them, like, uh, here you go. <laughs> a fine porcelain, <laughs> a fine porcelain collector plate bearing Mayhem's logo in precious 22 karat gold. <laughs> so, yeah, there's just uh, a bit of silliness. Oh, this is going on. You're probably all bored and bugging off by now. There's three more to go. I think this was going for quite a while. Uh, spent hours, hours of work on these things. And uh, as usual with anything that I do, it goes absolutely nowhere. No one really gives a shit about it. And so I end up giving up, losing hope, and you know, wanting to throw myself off a bridge. <laughs> right, this is the sixth issue from the creator of Suffering and the Brain Nick Cloud, Kentucky Fried Afterbirth. If anyone remembers an old movie called Kent the Kentucky Fried Movie, basically this is that. But you know, I've, took, I've taken the cover from it and used it for the Tucky Fried Afterbirth. And on the back, I've kind of paraphrased the, uh, the, what it says on the back of the video cover for a Kentucky Fried movie. It says, uh, Kentucky Fried Afterbirth zine is a classic of modern zine humour. Daring to poke irreverent fun at many of metal's most cherished institutions, particularly black metal, it embraces a rapid succession of hilarious articles that are as wacky as they are side-splitting. Basically, that's me pretty much just copying the words off the back of the video. Well, truth to tell, it's just a bunch of arse thrown together by a dedicated underground metal fan driven to talk bollocks and be generally all round stupid. Take this dumb cover, for instance. It's just a video cover from the Kentucky Fried movie, a really old dumb film, which just goes to show the editor's age off to everyone, really. And it says, more offensive than Megan Gjord, which is another fanzine. More shocking than Fitted Kitchens of the Living Dan, which is again another fanzine. More erotic than God Rhea, which is again another fanzine. You will cream in your jeans when you read Kentucky Fried Afterbirth zine. And that was basically a quote from the movie, Kentucky Fried Movie. And then I've got, a, yeah, I won't bother, I won't bother you anymore with it. But uh, yeah, there you go. This is a sooty from a flyer that I did. What I used to do, another thing I used to do is loads of different flyers, uh, and uh, one of them would be like um, sooty and sweep were on the counter, and Matthew, and he'd be saying sooty and sweep have become possessed by Satan since reading Kentucky Fried Afterbirth Zine. <laughs> Send two pounds to so and so to get your copy. So let me just go through this quickly because I'm getting tired now. Here's a picture of me back in the day, trying to look metal. Uh, this is November 1999. Uh, hello again, you Kentucky Fried Freaks and Afterbirth Addicts. Sorry. 
Uh, thanks a big sweaty bunch for buying my latest zine, blah blah blah. So it's got interviews of Abominant, As She Screams, Brutal Insanity, Seventh Child, Crawl Space, Dream Sphere, The Enchanted, Reign of Erebus, Eric Kite, Full of Hate, Morose, TBAC and Throne of Nails. There you go. I won't bother flicking for the pages. Oh, there's, there's me on the back with my mate when he was in the band Paradox. And he actually did a Christian special, I think, because uh, he's a Christian. And he did a like, Kentucky, Kentucky Fried Christian Metal, it says on the back here. Yeah? And it's got various reviews. I think I reviewed the story of O, which is like a, a Dissard book, or that's, yeah, and it's, yeah, a couple of sex books I reviewed for a laugh. Uh, lots of silly pictures. <laughs> Silly captions, but a lot more nicer layout kind of thing, in my personal opinion. Right, let's get through this quickly. Kentucky Fried Afterbirth, issue seven. That's Tim from Gold Rotted on the front. He was going out with my drummer and, uh, and eventually married her. And uh, talking about the seven deadly sins on the back, because uh, it's number seven. There's me pretending to shag my mum's dog <laughs> with lust written above my head. <laughs> Back in the days before the beard. Right, so also 007 theme. Kentucky Fried Afterbirth, issue 7, 007, shaken not stirred. Live and let die with gold rotted. Do odd jobs with the gold fingered, cold blooded. You only live twice featuring beef conspiracy. Discover why the world is not enough for damn. From Guernsey with Love starring Earth Corpse. Have the living daylight scared out of you by decayed. Have a thunderball with ligature. Learn how to get octopusy galore the serenade way. And say, oi, doctor, no! With, with, with vehemence or something like that. No, oi, drugs, no, but I've made, I've made the Uggs a bit small. It looks like doctor, no. Very stupid. Very stupid stuff. But uh, again, better layouts. More pictures in the layouts. There's me in the editorial, pretending to be James Bond. This is from September, 5th of September 2000, which was my birthday at that time. But about 19 years ago, so I would have been 30, I think, or 31. I don't know, maths. No, 31 I would have been then. So, there's Tales from the Grey Side is still in it. This is, a, this is me telling a story of when I discovered an old library book from the 70s that I should have taken back, like, yeah, 22 years previously. Oh, here's, uh, my uh, Lemmy Stairlift advert, <laughs> and here's like a, a, a parody against about corn, a charity appeal to help in the battle against blight. This is Brad from Alabama. He's been afflicted by an insidious disease which has left him outcast from civilized society. He is a corn fan and has been listening to them for many years. <laughs> Just uh, basically making out like it was an affliction to like corn, which it is. <laughs> Uh, Gorotti name that tune competition. I was actually got them to agree to do a competition where basically people wrote in with like ideas for song titles, and it actually got used um, on one of their albums. I think it was the stabbed in the back and dumped in the sack. I think was the winning entry in the end. Not as good as any of the entries that I made in it, but yeah, what can I say? There's a caption competition at the bottom there as well for uh, a band called Morose. Yeah. Earth Corpse, Decayed, Portuguese band, Portuguese uh, black metal, cool interview, Liga Chad, they were a cool thrashing band, Serenade again, I've interviewed them before. Oh, this one is Vehemence and Morose because they're sort of some of the same members. So I think the singer spoke about both of them. And then there's the, the very, very, very small font so I could get loads more information in basically. I think it was like, I think it was like grade 5 font so it's really really small in fact my eyes are probably not as good as they used to be but I can still I can still read it fortunately but I could dare say it's gonna come a day when I, my eyes won't be able to make them out anymore yeah but anyway cool stuff lots of silly lots of silly basically lots of good silly I've been forgetting to show you the bloody compilations haven't I so this is uh, Carl Gray and Dead number three. I haven't even got a cover for this one. 
This is just the master. It's got uh, Ad Nauseam, Angel Kill, Asaphated, Blazemph, Candle Serenade, Charon, um, Damage, Dawn, De Untermensch, Downright Malice, Drawn in Tears, Forlorn, Harmony, Hellbound, Natron, Paganus Doctrina, Pollution, Withered Beauty, Withering Surface. Yeah. And number four. This was actually pro recorded this time. I actually got it pro pressed, pro done in a uh, proper place. <sighs> wow, breath. Desecration, suffering, my band. Uh, C O L D, Evoke, Paradox, Execution, Gorotted, Serenade, Doria, Confusion Corporation, Drip Fed, and Seventh Child. All on this Cold Grand Dead 4. Right, Cold Grand Dead 5. Uh, I think that was pro recorded again, but it hasn't got any writing on the tape. The last one had writing on the tape, so it looked smarter. This has got Dream Sphere, Crawl Space, TBAC, Eric Kite, Brutal Insanity, Reign of Erebus, X Toll, Throne of Nails, Morose, Full of Hate, Seventh Child, Gorotted, The Enchanted, As She Screams, Deuteronium, this is our one, Deuteronomium, uh, Vakavandring, and Abominant. Yeah. Few of them are Christian bands actually. So my mate was a Christian, I was like in his band as well. He chose a couple of Christian bands on that one. Right. Right, then I went on to CD. So Cold, Grey and Dead uh, 6. Uh, 14 songs from 13 Call cool Underground bands. It's got Beef Conspiracy, Brain Choke, Cold Bloody, Damn, Decayed, Earth Corpse, Gorotted, Ligature, Oil, Paradox, Serenade, Vastion, and Vehemence. And that, I, think, I think that came with, with uh, number seven. With, the numbers wasn't tallying up, but when I started giving them out with fanzines, I think number six came out with KFA number seven. Yeah, very daft. And then finally, the last fanzine, Kentucky Fried Afterbirth number eight. A guy did this picture for me. I can't remember his name. Steve, I think maybe. Uh, and that came out with, uh, and see, Cold Grand Dead number seven came with KFA number eight. And this has got tracks by Avulsion, Brain Choke, Cold Bloody, Conquest of Steel, Decayed, Detrimentum, Forefather, Inversion, Mithras, Mulch, Obsidian, Paradox, Pit, Regorge, Reign of Erebus, Seven Aid, and Unsilence. So yeah, nice picture on the front that my acquaintance did for me. There's me being, can I play with madness on the back? <laughs> with all the stuff falling out of my head. <laughs> Yeah, and most of those bands on the fan, on the compilation are in the uh, interviewed inside as well. So, Vulsion, Brain Show, Conqueror of Steel, Detriment, and Extreme Noise Terror, Forefather, Frustrum, Mulch, Obsidian Pit, Reign of Erebus, and uh, Unsilence. Um, yeah, pretty good layout, pretty well done. Still small font. I, I can't remember if I hadn't mentioned it, but, but I don't know when I started doing it by email. But when I started doing interviews by email, it was a lot easier, a lot better, a lot more fun because I'd, I'd ask a couple of questions and then judging by what they said in the last question, I'd be able to invent the next question or extrapolate further on that question. So, yeah. There you go. Lots of cool stuff on there. More Tales from the Grey Side, more Tea and Sympathy. Uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. Pretty good in this day. Quite uh, sordid humour. <laughs> right, so that's it then. That's all, that's my, that's my Kentucky Fried Afterbirth uh, fanzine. Eight issues I did. This one, last one is dated January the 11th, 2002. So that was the last one I did. It's just like, I used to sell it at gigs actually. That was why I mostly, mostly would try and sell it. And um, one one issue I tried doing a thousand because I got a CD and I thought I'd be able to sell more, but it was just too much like hard work. Got threatened to be thrown out of a venue for trying to sell my fanzines. I'd be outside trying to flog it to people as well. A lot of people just not interested. You know, they'd rather spend, they'd rather buy another pint than, you know, or you'd be, oh, I've not heard of any of those bands. And I'd be like, yeah, that's the fucking point, mate. You've not heard of the fucking bands. This is how you can hear about them by buying a fucking fanzine. 
and supporting the underground. I never said that, of course, but I thought that inside. But I think the, the main um, nail in the coffin, actually, I, I started trying to get the bands that were in it to say, like, you know, I'll give you 10 copies, you can sell them to your mates, sell them at gigs, you know, and, you know, keep. X amount or whatever and send me the rest, you know, I can't remember how I worked it now but it was basically like, you know, take some copies off me and, and flog them I'll sell them to you for £2, you sell them for £3 you know, you help spread the word, you've made a bit of money that kind of thing, not an, not an awful amount and some of the bands uh, embraced it, which you think would be a good thing and there was one band, I'm not going to mention names because I don't want to, if they ever should listen to this but they even had a distro. They had a distro where they were selling stuff on their distro. And they refused to take any fanzines. And it was like, fucking come on guys, you, you're in the fucking fanzine. You know, you've got, you're selling stuff online already. You know, surely you must be able to sell 10 bloody fanzines to your, you know, to your mates, to your fans or whatever. But they, I didn't bother actually, I didn't actually say that to them. Because I was just like, okay. And they were just like, well, fucking hell. <laughs> You've got a bloody well distro and you can't bother to take a few copies of my fanzine to try and, you know, say, so I haven't got to try and sell them all. So that kind of like, just, you know, destroyed any uh, enthusiasm that I had left. <laughs> I'm not a very enthusiastic person anymore. I've given up on enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is with people who have got optimism, which I don't have. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for looking at this. If you probably, you probably haven't even looked at it, let's face it. I'm not even enthusiastic about my YouTube channel, to be honest, because most of the time I do a video and like 10 people will watch it and then they won't make any comments even. So, whatever. I've done it now. Something to do. I'm sweating and I'm out of breath and uh, probably boiled you to tears. Anyway, cheers for watching if you did.